Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Jeff Denton. This is Ruby Snack number 66, Package Management with Yarn. In this episode, we're going to learn how to add and remove third-party packages with Yarn, how to import them into your JavaScript files, and how to use scripts to run tasks with the command line. To code along, pull down the Ruby Thursday example app with this branch, git clone-b ruby snack 65 single branch, which is where we left off in the last episode. CD into Ruby Thursday, bundle, then Rails db create, db migrate, and now run yarn to install our JavaScript dependencies. We touched on yarn in the first video of this series, but we didn't need to do much with it to get webpack rolling, so it was just a quick intro. Now that you know how modules work, it's time to circle back and talk about how we can add third-party dependencies to our project using Yarn. You all know how much time and trouble is saved by using Gems and Bundler, so I don't need to tell you how helpful this is going to be for your JavaScript development. For starters, let's make some comparisons to dependency management in Rails. You can think of Yarn as the equivalent to Bundler, package.json as your gem file, and a package as a gem. Now how are they different? With Bundler and RubyGems, we add the gem directly into your gem file, but with Yarn, we use the command line. These are the most common commands you'll use. Yarn, which is actually the same as Yarn install, Yarn add, Yarn remove, and Yarn upgrade. It's pretty straightforward. There's also Yarn init, which will start a new project, but you won't need that if you're using the Webpacker gem, only if you're starting a new project from scratch. To demonstrate what it would be like to join a project, I'm going to go into the Ruby Thursday project and delete the node modules folder. Then, in the terminal, I'm going to run yarn. Yarn reads the package.json file and pulls in all the necessary dependencies. Let's say you want to use a library to handle AJAX requests, and you choose Axios. Let's take a look at yarnpackage.com and search for Axios to see how we can add it. Yarnpackage.com pulls in the readme from GitHub and gives us a little snippet we need to install it. In this case, it's yarn add Axios. Usually if you're on GitHub, you'll see instructions on how to install it with npm, and it'll be npm install Axios dash dash save. Yarn add is the yarn equivalent. With npm, you need dash dash save for the package to be added to your package.json file, but with yarn, it's automatic. Let's paste that into the terminal, and once it's done, we can look in the package.json file to see that Axios has, in fact, been added. If you need a specific version of, of a package, it can be added with yarn add package at version number, or if a tag is specified, you could use that, so it would be yarn add package at latest. Um, and if you need a package specifically for your development workflow, but not something that's going to wind up in your final code, such as like the Webpack dev server, which in our case was included automatically by Webpacker, you can add that dependency with yarn add webpack dev server dash dash dev or just a dash dash capital D. So back to Axios. Let's say you change your mind. Maybe it wasn't working out or you just heard some cool stuff about Super Agent and wanted to give it a try. First, we can remove Axios with yarn remove Axios. Uh, we can check the package.json and confirm it's gone. Uh, now, back in the terminal, we can do yarn add super agent. Cool. Now we're ready to go back into our code and change all the AJAX requests. And the last command we're going to go over is upgrade. Running yarn upgrade insert package name here will update the specified package. But if we just run yarn upgrade, it'll update all the packages in your package.json. In my experience, this is a pretty bad idea. I think it's best to update one package at a time because it's a lot easier to track down bugs that were introduced by major updates. Updating everything at once can get pretty hairy, so just be careful. Now, 
I'm feeling pretty indecisive today, so I've switched back to Axios. Let's take a look at how to import it. We covered modules in the last episode, so you already know how to import your own files. Third-party modules are different. If a file is included in your package.json file, you don't need to track it down in the file system with dot dot slash path slash to slash my file. You can reference it directly by name. So in this case, it's just import Axios from Axios. Imports always go at the top of the file. I like to put a line break between the packages I'm importing from Yarn and the modules that I've built on my own. Another thing you need to look out for is default versus named functions. Obviously, you should always check the documentation on the correct way to import your package. Some libraries, like React, use both default and named imports. So if you're having an issue where the module you're trying to import is not defined, refer to the docs and make sure you're importing it correctly. Finally, let's look at how Yarn can help us run scripts with a run command. I find it a little annoying to write dot slash bin slash webpack dash dev dash server every time I want to start the server. So we're going to add a script that makes it a bit easier to type. We can add scripts to the bottom of the package.json file and create some custom commands. We're going to add one for dev, which runs the dot slash bin slash webpack dash dev dash server that starts our server. Oh, and make sure you add the comma before scripts or it's going to break. Now, when we go back to the terminal, we can run yarn run dev, and that's much better. So that's all for now. Hopefully you feel confident enough to pull some libraries into your project and you have a good understanding of modules. In the next episode, we're going to use the Webpacker gem to install React, and then we're going to write some more JavaScript. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up and check out older episodes if you're new. If you are not subscribed on YouTube, you can click that big Ruby there to subscribe. And here are some other videos that you might be interested in. YouTube subscribers get the episodes just a little bit before everyone else. If you have any comments or questions, it's best to leave those on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.